What's going on, folks? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. This is the Tom O'Brien Show. Let's take a look quickly at what we got going on in the market. I mean, we're just kind of flat, right? You have the E-mini up about 0.10%. You're getting kind of the mid-range below the open yesterday, at least in the E-mini. The SPY sideways as well. Russell Futures down about 0.53%. NQ sideways, the composite sideways, everything. Dow Futures off about 0.2%. The Dow Jones itself off about 0.2% as well. Gold is kind of sideways. Silver a little bit higher, 0.62% uh, right now. And then copper off about 0.85%. Crude oil recovering a little bit. You know, I, I think a lot of this is just the market kind of breathing in or holding their breath until we get some more economic data coming in later this week. You know, we have the inflation data on Thursday. Yeah, obviously Powell spoke today as well, and uh, I saw a bunch of articles headlining, essentially defending, again, this 75% chance that we're going to lower interest rates by September, have cuts, and that's not what Powell really said, right? And as he's been saying for the past few months, it's like, yes, there has been, you know, nominal progress, uh, but they still need to see more. So a lot of this hinges on what, the data is essentially coming out this week. And if it is good for the Fed's you know, track of 2% inflation, then yeah, well, we might get a rate cut in September. Uh, it's not overheated is what Powell says. Let's take a little look at what he was saying. He said at the same time in light of the progress made both in lowering inflation and in cooling the labor market over the past two years, elevated inflation is not the only risk we face. Reducing policy restraint too late or too little could unduly weaken economic activity and employment. I think economic activity is still somewhat strong. The job market is, you know, moderately strong as well. So it just remains to be seen. But I, I don't see, uh, again, a surefire thing right now, right? I mean, really, you run the massive risk. You still have so much capital that exists in this market that um, is basically frozen. You have CDs and money market funds it's on the sideline, right? And if you lower rates too soon, you're going to get an inflationary surge again because the market is going to basically open the floodgates to all that capital that still exists. And by the way, capital that's been gaining, you know, say like 4.5 to like 5% in CDs and money market funds, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's a massive risk, I think, that exists still. And uh, we'll have to wait to see what goes on with it. Uh, before we go any further... I'm going to take you guys over to TFNN.com. Now, this is the front page. If you scroll down, we are doing our annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. This is fantastic. You can get up to a 40% uh, bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. So we have the three tiers here. You get a 20% bonus, 30% or 40%. Now, these go, uh, these go to all your Tiger, excuse me, to all your TFNN purchases. Uh, once they're applied to your account, they go first, you know. Uh, this is a really fantastic time if you want to check out a new newsletter. Of course, we have a 30-day money-back guarantee on all our newsletters, whether you use Tiger Dollars or not. But it is a good time if you want to check out one of the webinars we have. I mean, man, we've been, you know, talking about Tim Ward. Tim Ward is going to be on today. Check this out. It's phenomenal. Even Teddy Kekstats. Again, no better time. And then, of course, on Friday as well, it's going to be this Friday, uh, we have another installation of Live Trading Fridays with Larry Pesavento. So definitely check that out. If you have any questions, on any of this, go ahead and email me at jacob at tfnn.com. And, uh, yeah, I'll try to help you. I'm definitely going to help you. All right, let's take a look at uh, NVIDIA. I'm not going to take too long of a look at NVIDIA. This is actually going to be kind of a segue into Intel and kind of my thoughts on that. So up 2.43% today. It's still got a bullish call, okay? And this is because they're releasing their Blackwell chip, which is going to be massive. And KeyBank apparently likes it. I think a lot of people like this. Um, so KeyBank analysts reported that the demand for NVIDIA's upcoming Blackwell platform is even better than previously expected. This is a quote, the interest and demand in the GB200 is greater than we initially had sized. It should support data center revenues of over $200 billion in 2025. Okay, NVIDIA is a hard one to play around just because I think it's, you know, what are we trading at? $3.2 trillion right now. I'm not saying to bet against it because I think that would be kind of insane because a lot of people like this stock. Um, but here's what I will say, right? You have Intel who's been popping up recently. This is going to be the competitor, right? Intel's interesting. Let's get this off the week. Intel is interesting, right? Because it can benefit from the CHIPS Act, right? 
Uh, it has this kind of, you know, friend sourcing deal going on with it, and it also fabricates, right? So it not only designs, but it fabricates the chips, whereas you have NVIDIA designing, and then TSM fabricates it for them. Uh, however, you know, this is a stock that has had pretty bad management for a very long time, right? They haven't done a lot. There's some anecdotal info that I get saying that they're unable to really retain talent, which is a major problem, that they're having other companies come to teach their engineers how to really build chips in a positive way. Now, they're really, you know, supporting this Gaudi 3, right? This is what they're going to compete, uh, compete with NVIDIA with, okay? It doesn't seem like the Gaudi 3 is exceptionally better than Blackwell, which is a problem, right? So in the realm of, like, machine learning, you have these floating points, right? And floating points are, like, floating point 32, floating point 64. These are just, you know, numerical values for certain concepts in machine learning. What's good about the Blackwell and the Gaudi 3 is they can break it down lower, right? So the lower you break down this, like, floating point group, the less, you know, memory and bandwidth you use in computing. The precision uh, gets worse, but at some certain point, you know, this is kind of like a cost benefit of what you want to do. So Gaudi 3 does the FP8 as well as Blackwell, but Blackwell also does FP4, which Gaudi 3 does not. So the only competitive edge I really see with Gaudi 3 is going to be that it's going to have to be a little bit cheaper than Blackwell, right? And I still think that will be a major demand uh, for Gaudi 3 if that's the point, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. This has obviously popped up pretty significantly over the, uh, the past few days. I think yesterday it was up like 6%. Uh, and it might seem like a no-brainer, right, in the sense that they're going to benefit majorly from being an American company. They fabricate and they will design. But it just depends. Can they do it soon enough until this AI hype, or excuse me, do it soon enough before the AI hype is, is over, right, and the spending into these chips is over. And I think the spending in chips will go on, you know, ad infinitum, but it, it depends when Intel can get into that cycle, and I, I'm not sure if they're poised yet to do it. I mean, and we're talking about, look at 3456 versus, I mean, we don't have to look at the share price. I mean, 147 billion market cap versus 3.2 trillion, right? They're, they're not really comparable right now. Uh, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Basil Chapman.